What's poppin' people? This is gonna be part one of a two or three part series all about like design. If you're watching this video right now, I've actually played a trick on your mind. I could have easily titled this video, how to find designs that make you 300,000 a month and then shown you like some other dude's design. But I've intentionally titled this video something very basic, like how to find a winning design or something. Why did I do that? Here's why I did that. Because that way, we're only bringing in people to this video that are cool, that are taking action, and that are like actually serious about this. We're not trying to like bring in the get rich quick crowd who's like, oh, where's the next thing? Where's the next move? By you clicking on this video and watching it, it's an official sign that you're serious, you're taking action, and that you're super cool. So now that we've confirmed that we're surrounded by super cool people, let's get right into the video. This part one video is gonna be all about how I actually create a design, how I come up with a concept, and how do I know it's gonna do pretty well. The next video is gonna be about like hiring designers and like the whole actual creation and design process. And then possibly I'm gonna make a third and final video that will show you to like how to build a brand around your design and actually make people want your design even if it's not that good of a design. But let me start this video off with why I even like clothing, why I think it's much easier for you to sell. So let's say you're doing jewelry, let's say you're doing accessories or utensils or some other like product like that. When it comes to clothing, I want you to think about your own room, your own house. How many jackets, t-shirts, pants, socks? Right behind the camera right now, there's a massive, almost embarrassing pile of just clothes. Jackets, t-shirts, hoodies, everything. We are always buying clothes. I'm not gonna waste your time with like the psychological reason as to why, but long story short, we pretty much feel good when we buy things. And clothes are one way we can express ourselves, so we buy clothes really often in order to express certain moods, certain emotions. With jewelry and accessories, I've been wearing this necklace every day since I was 17. It's a one-time purchase. These bracelets I've been wearing every day for like the past two or three years. What I like so much about clothing is that it's technically a need and a want at the same time because I'm hoping that most of you guys don't leave your house without clothes. But clothing is technically a need because you need clothes to actually go out in society and be shown in public. And it's also a want because by putting a cool design on it, this for example, it makes you want to buy it. So by combining a need and a want together at the same time, I feel like it's so much easier to actually work in the clothing space than it is with accessories or other stuff like that. Also, I've, I've been doing my best to respond to all of your messages on Instagram. A lot of you guys are sending me things like home decor, kitchen products, makeup products. Going into those can totally work, but you always gotta ask yourself, what's to stop this person from just walking across the street and going to Walmart and buying it there. The only way your product is gonna stand out is if it's either very unique or you just have a ton of social proof from a bunch of famous people wearing it or you just have really, really good marketing and branding around the product. That's a topic for another video. Let me now tell you the whole like design process. So with your clothing, you're either gonna have a niche company or you're gonna have just like a general clothing store which pretty much is like your actual own clothing line. So I personally run two stores. One of them's like a super niche store targeted to like one group of people. And then the other one's just like a legitimate standalone clothing line that I'm trying to build a brand around. So let's talk about the general store first, having like an actual clothing line that you run. Rather than just aimlessly putting out something and then hoping that it works, which is possible if you have good enough branding, but that's for like the last video. Rather than doing that, we wanna make sure we're leveraging popular trends. So here's what I do. I'll actually physically go to the mall and go into stores like Zara, Forever 21, and H&M. Why these stores? Because they rotate their inventory so often and they're only putting things in there that they know will sell. Like Zara, H&M, Forever 21 at their headquarters, there are people that are getting paid lots of good money to come up with designs that they know will sell. So by, by you actually walking into the store and actually seeing that design, it means that a highly paid group of people are convinced that that product is gonna sell. Otherwise, they wouldn't even put it in the store. So what I like to do is I put my own twist on everything. I'll actually go into the store, I'll take notes of things. So maybe I'll see like, okay, there's lots of white hoodies, there's stuff with roses, there's like lots of Adidas stuff. I take like little mental notes. Sometimes I even pull out my phone and I take little notes as to what's popular right now. 
and then essentially my goal is to do it better. That sounds super arrogant, like, oh, you're gonna do better than Zara, better than Forever 21, but guys, if you have a print-on-demand store, you're actually at a huge advantage over them, and here's why. In order for you to come out with something, all you do is pay your designer, upload the design to the Printful app, or whatever app you're using, and that product is now in your store. Boom, 45 minutes, you can have a new product in your store that you think is gonna sell well. What happens if Forever 21 wants to come out with a new design? They have to go through a design team, they have to send it to their suppliers, they have to do all this work, and then the actual product lands in the store a few months later, which is why it's so hard for them because they always have to be ahead of the game. Because the things that you see in their stores right now, they've been planning ahead months in advance. And guys, I'm sure you know how fast trends move on social media. We're at a huge advantage by having a print on demand store because we can jump on trends literally within a day of them happening. Whereas with these major companies, it takes them months to get a design actually into the store. So when I go in there, I'm looking at what's popular, but then because it's my clothing line, my brand, I take what I like and things that I think are doing well and I create my own design out of it. But at the same time, I'm leveraging certain popular things in fashion right now. So it's not an exact copy at all. It's literally my own design, but I incorporate things that are doing well. Like I'll go into the store and I'll be like, wow, I would have wore this if it didn't have this, or I would have wore that if it had this. And I'm kind of taking notes on that. I come back home, I look through my notes and I come up with some concepts. But here is why we're at a huge advantage. It's so much easier. In, in a previous video, I talked about the design evolution, where you're gonna come out with the design and then the longer you have your store open, you're gonna evolve that design and then six or seven variations down the line, that's when you guys start going like heavier into your marketing. So let me give you an exact example of that. So right now, white hoodies are very popular, they're doing well. Roses are very popular, they're doing well. It is very hard to just find a hoodie, a white hoodie with a rose design. Cause all the, all the ones I saw literally yesterday at the mall were just covered in like some atrocious writing. That's my personal opinion though, but I also know that there are people that agree with my opinion. And my goal as a clothing line is to get that product in front of people that also agree with my opinion and which we'll get into in the third video of this series to build a brand around it to make people actually desire that product. Super cool, we're gonna get into that. So definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed because I really do not want you to miss that one video. But let's say we make a hoodie. Let's say we have a black hoodie and it has a rose on it. It makes some sales. And then we take another variation of that design. Let's say now we try it with a white hoodie. It's a white hoodie and it has just a red rose on it somewhere on the hoodie. Okay, boom, we see we got a little bit more of a spike in sales. But let's say now on the next design, we try to take the, the rose and we make it like a tie-dye color. So it's the same white hoodie, but now I've made the rose tie-dye color. Whoops, sales go down. Okay, we're getting feedback, we're learning. The next time we make the design, it's now still the white hoodie because we know that converts well, but this time I'm gonna make the rose all gold. Boom, a small spike in sales. We've made the rose gold this time. Then on the next design, I'm like, hmm, what if I put a French quote kind of around the rows. Boom, okay, we got more sales. And then your design is gonna evolve. That series of like four or five designs that I just told you, how long would it take for H&M, Zara, Forever 21 to actually go through that process? Yeah, they have their own internal systems, they have test groups and everything, but we're actually able to put this thing and make money on it while we're even going through the testing process. So what we try to talk about the most on this channel is like our two biggest rules is like, Put the right product in front of the right people, but just don't burn tons of money while doing it because you're always gonna have a sort of figuring out process. And our goal is to get through that figuring out process as fast as possible, and then we start throwing big money once we have our like winning product that we've tested, we've gotten feedback on, and we've already started making money on. That's the example of like the actual clothing line stand. But what if you're gonna make a niche store? What if you wanna target a very specific group of people? What if you wanna target college football fans? What if you wanna target anime people? How are you gonna make a design that doesn't infringe on any copyrights, but will still get you sales? Here's an example and here's how you're gonna do it. And by the way, if you ever try to get licensing with any of these companies, it's like almost impossible unless you're already making like a million dollars a year. I tried contacting Cartoon Network because there's a like very specific character that I wanted to use for something, and they pretty much politely told me no. But that's totally cool, because now me and my designer are just gonna make our own cartoons. It was just one concept that we had. But let me give you a very specific example. And 
I don't know if this is your first time watching my videos or anything, but in previous videos, we highly emphasize to stick to a niche and a group of people that you know. Otherwise, you'll never be able to actually put... I don't want to say never, but you're going to have to... Like that design evolution theory that I just told you about, it's going to take you like 40 variations to figure it out if you don't know what you're doing. So here's a college football example. So if I didn't understand college football, I would just make a football like thing. Oh yeah, woo, football, and then a picture of football. But if you're actually watching the games and you know the culture, here's an example of something you could do. So let's say LSU, the LSU Tigers, that's one team, and the Oklahoma Sooners is another team. And guys, this is why we're at a huge advantage. Watch this. Let's say LSU plays Oklahoma. And Oklahoma just completely, and if you go to any of these schools, I'm sorry, it's just an example. Let's say Oklahoma completely blows out LSU. Let's say the score is 57 to 14, okay? Uh, let's say you have a college football fan print-on-demand website. Here's a design that you can make. So imagine the next day after that game, literally 24 hours after that game, you now have a Facebook ad running, which is super easy to target because you're just going to target the Oklahoma people, the Oklahoma students. And imagine if the shirt says, you wish it would have ended sooner. Or the Oklahoma mascot is the Sooners. And then let's say the you wish or something was in like the purple and gold of the Tigers. And then at the bottom, you have the exact score line. Because you're doing print on demand, you can just throw it up there. So you now have a very targeted group of people who are very passionate about something. And you're putting the right product in front of them while their emotions are spiked. Imagine what your sales are gonna look like when you do that. But if you don't know anything about college football, you're just gonna make a football t-shirt and then people are just gonna be like, what the heck is this? It's just a football t-shirt. There's a general and then a niche example of coming up with design ideas, what works, how to actually get ideas. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to actually contact the designer, what to tell them to make it super easy and super smooth and it's gonna be really good. Final thing I wanna leave you with though, if you're going the print on demand route, design is the foundation of your business. It's huge, you guys. We all have access to the same catalog. It's what you do with that catalog that is the difference between a successful business and a not successful business. And that what you do portion is kind of what I try to show you on the channel. Marketing, branding, getting the right product in front of the right people without burning too much money. If you're not subscribed, I highly recommend you subscribe because I really don't want you to miss the next two sections on uh, branding and on actually hiring the designer. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you like the video, if you want to give it a thumbs up, that would be super awesome. Thank you again so much for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.